everyone. Welcome back to RTS. And what are we going to do today? We are going to talk about reduce the spending. And I'm going to talk about three things that uh, have come up in questions or something that someone had asked me about. So I thought, well, what I would do, I would show. And so the first thing I wanted to show was that about OTT lights or OTT lights. And so we, if you've been a crafter or a scrapbooker for a long time, or even if you're new, you may or may not know that the best type of lighting for your crafting area, whether you're scrapbooking or crocheting or sewing or whatever, is you know re natural light. And so, of course, these OTT or OTT uh, lights and bulbs is the best for, especially when you're looking at papers. Let me pull a few up here. So if you put these papers under an OTT light, versus just a regular GE or Sylvania or whatever regular light bulb. And I don't know if my camera will pick this up, but it's two different shades. And sometimes, especially for me, I like things, you know, I really like rich color, dark color, bold colors, and I want to have a true color. So the way to go is odd lights. And I could get into a big explanation about all that. But one thing I want to say about reduced suspending is that do you know that you do not have to go buy an odd light. You do not actually have to have a lamp in order to benefit from these odd light natural lighting systems. So what you can do is you can just use your regular lamps, regular desk lamps in your craft space and you don't spend you don't have to spend ninety dollars for an odd light stand okay you can buy a light bulb and so when i found this out a few years ago i was like because i wanted an odd light for a long time and i could not justify spending 90 or up to 125 dollars especially since you know sometimes i do embroidery work and sometimes i do crochet work well you want that natural light and so i've always wanted one i just could not bite the bullet to spend the money because i couldn't figure out the model i wanted the style i wanted and which room i was going to use it in so so, long story short, to reduce the spending, you can buy odd light bulbs for your lamps and whatever desk lamp you're using now. The only thing you have to pay attention to is that whatever your lamp suggests bulb you use, that's the bulb you should use. If your desk lamp says do not use greater than a 40 watt bulb, then don't. If it says do not use greater than a 60 watt bulb, then don't. Don't have a 60 watt desk lamp and you're putting in a hundred watt that's not what you should do that's not safe and regardless if you're using it in your craft space or any place in your home do what the manufacturer suggests if it says only use 40 watt only use 40 watt and on these light bulbs it'll say what the conversion is okay I'm glad because I don't understand this this new system of bulbs so in my room I have been slowly converting over to these because I have several lights and now that I'm filming I have more than several lights and so these can be affordable if you know where to buy them at okay years ago it used to be that Lowe's sold them and since my husband was all for always there I had him pick them up there but they don't sell them no longer they don't carry them so the best place I found to get them is an actual Joann store and you can get them. Sometimes they run 40% off sales or you can go in and use a coupon on these. Okay. And so again, pay attention to the wattage because you know, you think, well, you want a lot of light, you're going to buy hundred watt. Well, if your lamp is not, you know, manufactured for hundred watt, do not put in a hundred watt bulb. That's not safe. Okay. So most of our desk lamps will be, you know, the 40 and the 60, just pay attention to that. Okay. So here's a 60 watt bulb and I will pull this out. And this is about a $10 bulb. And of course, you can get it on sale or use a coupon. Well, <laughs> if I could open it, dear my goodness. Okay, now I'm going to show you something else to be careful with with these bulbs. Okay. And one thing you can do is in the, when you're in a store and you're buying a light bulb, whatever you're buying, give it a shake, a little shake. And if you hear a rattle, don't get it. And I have a little tidbit about light bulbs. Okay, so this would be a 60 watt. Okay, I'm going to keep that because I don't want anything to happen to it. And then here would be your 100 watt. Okay, now I have different desk lamps. So the moral of the story is you do not have to buy an OTT light itself in order to benefit from the OTT lighting system. You can buy these light bulbs and use them in your regular desk lamps. When I found that out, 
I was happier than anything. So excited, okay? So that's that's the big jobby. That's the 100 watt, okay? Now, what I want to show is what you have to be careful of, okay? This is what you have to be careful of because these things break so easily. This was a brand new light bulb. I got it out of the box and that's the way it was. Maybe it would have fell and, and so of course you, know, you can't twist it in. But I want to give you a tip of something we probably have been doing wrong. Well, we have been doing wrong for ever since I've been born. Do you know that you know when you pretend this is where you're gonna, this is your desk lamp and you're putting your light bulb in. And this is what we do. We grab a light bulb by the end and we screw it in that way, okay? I recently, well, not recently, a few years ago, I, you know, it says, well, you know, you're not so bright, you can't even screw in a light bulb. Well, here's the thing. None of us have probably been doing it right. You are not supposed to screw in a light bulb with this end. You're supposed to screw a light bulb in with this, this end. That's how you're supposed to screw it in. How many of us do it this way? We hold on to the end of this. And what happens is, is that when we turn this, those little coils and those little fibers in there, these, well, they're filaments is what they're called. Those filaments can get twisted and cracked, and that can that can make your light bulb not last as long. So you're not supposed to hold on to the tip of a bulb when you put it in. You're supposed to hold on to the base of your light bulb. There's your your tidbit for today, and there's glass going everywhere. Oh my, yeah. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm putting that in the box, and I'm taking it back because a ten dollar light bulb. Yeah, that's a ten dollar light bulb. Again, you can get them on sale. And the only place I have found them, of course, you know, I don't get into a million stores, but the only place I have found them is Joann's. Now, my husband had said to me, well, just order them off Amazon. No, I have learned to stop ordering anything glass or ceramic from Amazon. My last three orders that were glass and ceramic all ro arrived broke. So I don't, I don't do that anymore. So that is how you can reduce the spending. You do not have to spend $90 for a desk lamp for this OTT system. You can buy the bulbs, use your regular that you already own, desk lamps. Love that. Now, how can I do that? I think what I'm gonna do is pause this video because I need to put these back in my box because I wanna keep them good. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. What I want to mention one more thing about these OTT light bulbs is that this 60 watt is about $10 and this 100 watt is about $15, okay? And so I saw that some of the specialty ones, you know, the U-shaped light bulbs, they can run up to $35. So that would be another reduce the spending tip is that when you're buying one of these OTT, if you're actually buying the actual OTT lamp, or whatever system you're buying, before you hit that buy button, look to see how much the replacement bulbs cost. And the reason I say that is because I was recently in a Tuesday morning and they had one for sale and I thought, oh, that would be a good price for someone. And then you come to find out that they discontinued the bulbs. So always, you know, you know what it, you know what I mean? If you can't get the replacement bulb, it doesn't matter how much of a deal you're getting on the desk lamp itself. Okay, so that's enough about the odd lights. But you can buy the bulbs. You don't have to buy the lamps. Okay. Love that. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about, reduce the spending. Okay. I want to talk about Fiskars for a minute. Now I just talked about this in another video and in August will mark my 23 years of scrapbooking, 23 years. And 23 years ago when my husband got me started to scrapbooking, that's another whole story. I started with a Fiskars trimmer and 23, 23 years later, I'm still using Fiskars trimmers, okay? And let me tell you why. Customer service. <laughs> they have a lifetime warranty on their products, not just their trimmers, but their punches, everything. I even have Fiskars garden tools. That's just a great company. And the reason I'm talking about that is because, you know, I've taught a lot of classes, and this is a great trimmer. And, you know, I can talk about trimmers in another video, but this is a, for beginners, this isn't a good Fiskars trimmer and you can, you know, get them at Joann's Michael's Hobby Lobby and you can use a coupon. But a lot of people will say, oh, well, these the guides or the wires, wires will break or there'll be a problem. Do you realize that you do not have to go buy a new trimmer? All you have to do is contact Fiskars customer service and I will have their information listed in the description box and you can send them a picture, send in a claim form and they will replace whatever part part needs to be replaced for the lifetime or they will send you a new trimmer okay I think well, I can't even tell you how many times I have contacted them and I have either gotten replacement guides or something if oh I remember one time I had a trimmer and this wore off quickly he sent me a whole new trimmer I mean 
no fuss, no muss. If you have a Fiskars problem, contact them, put in a claim, and see what they tell you. Okay, the reason I'm talking about Fiskars is because in a lot of Tuesday morning hauls, I have been seeing people show these Fiskars punches. And now these are not cheap punches. And, of course, I've had these for a while. And, you know, <laughs> they're mega punches. They, they... You can literally knock someone out with these punches. That's how big they are, okay? And I wanted to show these because I think, I think if I saw correctly, they're showing up around $5 a Tuesday morning, okay? I want to say something about these punches. They're not the best. They really aren't, and I'll show you why. Okay, and I'm going to have to stand because it takes that much, do I say it, booby muscle? <laughs> yeah, it takes booby muscle to punch these things. <laughs> okay, and that probably was a... That probably was a clunk there. Okay, so there, I punched it out. Well, where's my where's my punch? There's my negative space. There's my pieces. Where's my punch? Yeah, that's the problem. I'll show you here in a minute. Well, I guess it would help if I turned this correctly. Oh, yeah, wow. What an exercise. Okay, so there's my negative space. There's my pieces. Where's my punch? That's the problem. Okay. I didn't think these were designed right, and... I put in a claim actually just a few days ago because I had pulled this out for a project and I knew I had wanted to talk to them about that and I forgot. So when I get my email from them, I will let you gals know what they told me. But here's the problem. My cut is stuck inside. Okay? So let me get a piece of paper that will show up. Well, that's... That's not going to show up. Maybe. Well, I only have 100 pieces of paper. You think I could find one in the right size? Okay, here we go. Okay, there's my punch. Okay, it looks okay in theory, but it's got ragged edges, and even on the front side, it's not a very good cut. That's not Fisker's quality. Okay? So, you know, Fisker's... So, what I'm doing, I'm taking my stylus, and I'm getting in there, and I'm trying to get into the meat of the punch... <laughs> And that's not even working. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah, you might get these punches for $5 right now, Tuesday morning. Look at look how that cuts. That, I mean, that's the back side. But even the front side, can you see that? That's, that's, not a, that's not a good cut. Okay. And you know the old trick they say, oh, take your punches and, and use aluminum foil. That doesn't work for me. It has never worked for me to sharpen my punches using aluminum foil. I, that has never worked for me. So I will be contacting Fiskars because I had just got this out and I knew I wanted to tell them about this. And so then I dug this one out because I thought I might as well do a two for one. And these are getting stuck. So I will update you of what Fiskars tells me about these because I'm not happy with them. Like I said, Fiskars is lifetime warranty. So the my point is, if you're buying a product and it says lifetime warranty, then finish up with that. If they say they have lifetime warranty and if you have a problem, don't ditch it. Don't give it to someone else and give them the headache. Follow through with it and see what they tell you. You know, I'm, and I will let you know what Fiskars tells me. I will tell you, I have had great customer service with them for years and years. So I will let you know what they say. The reason I'm saying this is because I see a lot of people running the Tuesday morning to get these and they are like 20 some bucks, maybe $25. I'm not sure. I think they're $20. And they're getting them for $4.99. There's no sense spending $5 on a punch with if it ain't that great. And I can tell you, I've had this, I don't know, three, four years. And I've only used it a couple of times because I wanted this. But it keeps getting stuck. And if I have to work with a tool, I'm not going to do it. So I will update you on that. But I will leave Fisker's customer service information down below. Put in a claim form, especially with your trimmers. Do not go buy a new trimmer. You don't have to. They will replace whatever needs to be replaced. So that's that. And what was my next one? Oh, what the reason Fiskars is on my brain too is that I just recently did a review the supply with this Fiskars bow tie punch. Awesome. Go watch that video. Okay. I will come back with my third reduce the spending topic. Okay. Hold on. Okay. My third area topic I wanted to cover was foam tape. 
okay? And I wish I would have knew a little bit about this in the beginning, but you know, years ago when we started using this, you know, we didn't have as many options as we do now. Plus people share a lot more uh, on social media than we, you know, we didn't have that capability years ago. So what I want to talk about is these foam mounting tape in these smaller rolls. And this is about $3.99, $4.99, depending on where you buy it. So about $5 for this roll. Now that's not a bad price, but there's not a lot on there if you're going to use foam tape a lot. This, you will go through this very quickly, okay? And so then, this is by Scotch, and, and they recently just went to the Scotch Create logo. And then this is Elmer's, and this comes in about a dollar cheaper than your Scotch brand. And you know, the old saying is cheaper for a reason because it's not quite as sticky and you're, you're getting about the same amount, but it's a different product. Okay. Scotch is Scotch. <laughs> Elmer's is Elmer's, but this is an alternative, right? Okay. So if you want to spend a little money, go with the Elmer's brand. Now, the other option is these white foam squares that I want to talk about because when I first started scrapping and first started using foam, this was our option. And let me tell you something, if you cut these in rows and you would wrap it around this, yeah, you're only getting about a third. If you buy it in these already pre-cut squares, you're getting about a third. And it's about the same price as this Elmer. So you have to say, you know, you want to spend $3 on this or $3 on this or say $4 on this. Okay. So different options. If you're just starting out, just buy a roll. Stay away from these mo these squares because what do you do? You just take a pair of scissors and cut it. I mean, really, you, do, you don't have to have that. Okay. Save some money. Okay. Now, if you're someone like me who uses foam mounting tape practically on every layout, okay, you know, you could consider a mega roll. Now, when these first came out, they came in at about thirty-two dollars. Then they went up to thirty-five, and I don't, I haven't bought an, bought any for a while, and I think they may be up to forty-two dollars. But if this is something, and I got it from Amazon, and if this is something that you're interested in, and I buy the fourth, the fourth inch, is that you could? What does that look like a half inch? I'm not quite sure. Does it say? No, yeah, it's a half inch. I'm sorry. You could, you know, look around, keep looking at Amazon, and it does every so often. It'll come in cheaper. But the last time, which was over a year ago, I think I saw it at $42. However, this is one of those things. If you use foam tape, this is an option because you buy one of these, and I scrapbook a lot, and it would take you over a year, maybe a year and a half, to go through this roll. That's a lot better than having to go to the store every month and buying one of these. Okay, that's the difference. So you want to know a little tidbit? If you were take to, to unravel this roll and wrap it around, how many way, how many loops would you think you got around this roll? And just to give you a visual, okay, this is five laps around this roll. How do I know that? Because I did it one day because I wanted to see how much could I save or how much was I spending versus, you know, I got something on there, something you know, four or five dollars versus 42. And like I said, this is the second time I bought this. And the first, you know, it did, it lasted at least a year and a half. Okay. So this is a good option. If you want to buy it once and be done, this is the way to go. Okay. And again, if you were to unroll this, it would take you, ooh, my rolls kind of smashed. It, you, if you wrapped it around, that would be five laps around this roll. That's to give you a visual. It's five of those laps. Okay, so that's a visual. <clears throat> now another option is, if you really want to reduce the spending and you really use a lot of foam, raise a hand here. Check your discount stores. Big Lots, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, because now they're carrying foam tape. This came from the Dollar, dollar Tree for a dollar. A dollar. So, yes. If you see that, and again, I will consider this a household expense because I use this more than my crafting, okay? I use this in my home, especially around the holidays. I use a lot of foam tape. Okay, so another thing I want to tell you, when you ever have you have this kind of problem with anything, you know what you can use, something you already have? You can use washi to secure those things. Yes, okay, another little tip. So, check out your discount stores, okay? They're all going to tell you it's acid-free, whatever, whatever, you know. <laughs> You know, you can follow that rule to a T or you can just, you know, things will fall where they may. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Okay, so check your Dollar Tree. Check your Big Lots. 
check your uh, Christmas tree shop. I've, I've bought it there before. Any kind of your discount stores and look for foam tape. It'll be where, you know, your stationary frames, especially in the framing department. That's where a lot of foam tape can be bought. At Big Lots, it was in the automotive section. At Dollar Tree, I've seen it in the automotive section. So a dollar <laughs> or a dollar fifty compared to $4.99. $3.99. Yeah, this isn't even an option for me anymore. I, I don't even go that route because this a dollar. And when you see it, you know, buy in bulk. Buy four or five of them. Buy six of them. You know, that's what you can do. So that is to give you a visual on how you can save some money on foam mounting tape. Now, another thing is that people have done. I don't know if I have any handy. Let me see if I can grab it. Yes, I can. If I don't have a crafty lanch is that you can buy this, you know, foam. Just fun foam, what we call it. Now, this would be a cheap alternative, but here's a downfall. I like to use this with my dies, but I really don't like it for for foam tape itself because it seems like I have to use so much adhesive to get this to stick to the back of my paper or my photos. So by the time I'm using my ATG to keep it on or I use my Scotch Quick Dry, it doesn't seem like I'm really saving any money because I'm having to make up for it in my liquid adhesive or my ATG, if that makes sense. So for me, I don't think this is cost effective if you're using it in a foam tape reference, if that makes sense, okay? So even though you can get this cheap, you're having to use a lot of adhesive to get it to stick, okay? Probably because, you know, it just soaks in, okay? Okay, so that is our segment today on how to reduce the spending. And so to go over a couple tips, instead of actually buying an odd lamp, perhaps you could look into buying the odd bulbs and see if that would be something you could use in your space and also definitely a lot cheaper okay and then second of all with something like these punches or any type of tools that you're bringing into your space if it has a lifetime warranty or any type of warranty take it to your advantage and then the other tip to learn from that is if you're buying a punch or a die or any kind of tool gadget open it up you know soon and see if it works see if there's a problem do not let it sit in boxes and bags and in your space for months raising my hand I've done that okay it's better to use the product quickly and see if there's a problem because then you can return it okay and then lastly if you have something in your space in your craft room or scrapbooking process that you're going to use often consider buying it in bulk to see if that is worth your while and then also to looking at discount stores to see if you can see buy the same product but much cheaper and you know we need to realize we don't have to always buy it at the first store we see unless you can use a coupon <laughs> okay so that's that wraps up our segment of how to reduce the spending save some jingle because then we can use that jingle for other things like paper <laughs> okay come back to rts because you never know what we're gonna learn bye